Hello, welcome to Transformation TV. My name is Robin Chodak. You are watching my show, Helping You Transform. And how do I help you transform? I bring to you amazing transformational teachers and best selling authors. And today I have with us today, Jana Callum. And I love the work that she's doing and she's gonna tell us all about it in her book. But just to let you know, she is a transformational coach, a relationship coach. She has studied advanced training in the laws of attraction. And a lot of her book is based on equine experimental training. And she is an expert in that field based on what I have read and know about her because she has studied energies. And we are all about energy, right? Because we live in an energetic universe. And Jaina has discovered some very interesting things. And she is here to share those with you. And you say, well, okay, what, what can she teach me? Well, what she's going to talk about is relationship. And who of you watching doesn't want to have better relationships or just get into a relationship? So this is where Jana is going to help us. So I am going to bring our beautiful guest on. There we go. Hi, Jana. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? <laughs> great. Thank you for having me on. Oh, it's great to have you. And I, I, you know, I hope I got everything out there about you, but I think the focus on, on your book, straight from a horse's mouth, which is such a, such a catchy title. <laughs> Thanks. So, you know, I always like to ask our guests what provoked them or what was caught, what brought them to write the book, something in you, some desire, some passion that wanted to write this book. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always been horse crazy, like since, I think since I, I, I sort of joke about that I came out of the womb being like, horses! <laughs> um, they, they've just always been really um, important to me. And uh, over the years, I have had different kinds of relationships with them. Um, I've done a lot of riding. I also have done a lot of sort of spiritual work with them. And that's the, as you mentioned, the equine facilitated experiential learning. Um, I did uh, you know, two years of training in that and it changed my life the first time I experienced it. It's all about learning how you interact with the world through the lens of, um, through the way that the horses are responding to your energy. And um, so then I was gifted with this miraculous creature, my horse, Jove, um, who I had for seven years. And we did that equine facilitated learning work with, um, with clients and um, just really, you know, it was, it, it was transformational in so many different ways for so much, for me, just witnessing the work that he would do in the round pen with clients and, for our clients, obviously. Um, and so um, he actually died a couple of years ago. And after he did, I wanted to find a way to keep his um, wisdom alive. And um, so I started writing about experiences that we had had together. And um, and that became a series of, of blog posts. And then I took all of those stories and made them into a book that was really specifically about the things that he taught about relationship, um, specifically intimate relationships. And so um, sort of um, took a new perspective on the things that I had learned from him. And just through the process of writing that book, I actually learned more and had a kind of deeper understanding and deeper connection with that horse wisdom. So oh. that's how Straight From a Horse's Mouth came about. <laughs> Well, that's, that's so interesting that you say that you learned more. I think that writing in general, because I'm a writer as well, we all are on Transformation TV. You know, I'm hearing a little, some kind of weird 
strange. Yeah, I was hearing that too. Maybe you want to. <laughs> maybe I will put my headphones back on. We were talking before about maybe I shouldn't have them on. Maybe I should. It was a little bit of a pounding in the background. <laughs> With it. Yeah. I'll see if it takes it away. Okay. Is that better? Yes, yes, that's better. Thank you. <laughs> Not so much with the no headphones. <laughs> yeah, make sure everyone can hear you well. Yeah. So we can hear all about this this energetic training, which I love. But back to the writing. Yes, I think writing as we continue to write, and we all on Transformation TV have written a book, and I have written several books, and 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 I think that we do continue to to learn and grow from our writing. And that's why we want to offer everyone in the, watching this your book. Yeah, yeah. They can read your book and learn about this, but I just want to delve right into it because I find it so fascinating. Yeah. I, I do Reiki myself, so I understand energy, but to be honest, I've never been around horses that much in my life. I think when I was about 12, I went horseback riding one time. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So I, I, I find this this really, really fascinating. But I wanted to ask you how, and you might have said it, so forgive me, how many years did you work with Joe? Um, I had him for seven years. Seven and years. so um, the majority of that, we were we were doing that that specific work. But actually, the reason that I sort of got on the path of um, of doing this work with people, like in my own business, was because of him because he had this um, kind of series of health issues. So I learned how to do equine massage therapy, and then um, I learned Reiki also, um, and was doing that with other horses and with him um, and with people and dogs. And you know, I sort of incorporated those things. And then um, I, the woman that I learned Reiki from. Um, actually teaches the equine facilitated learning work. Her name is Barbara Alexander, and she's and just an incredible human. And so I worked with her um, in, in sort of a you know she was my mentor in that work for um, for those years, and um, and just opened me up to a whole kind of new way of understanding the way that I was interacting with people, the way that people were understanding my interactions. Um, the whole idea of being able to set clear, healthy boundaries had never even really occurred to me until I started doing this work. And then I, you know, had to, I, I felt like just a total beginner in terms of, you know, how to do that and how to be sort of in that healthy place in relationships and how to approach people in a way that was, that was mutually um, sort of honoring of, what they were needing and what they were bringing and what I was needing and what I was bringing. And um, so, yeah, it was, um, it, it's all about working towards what I call the energetic dance. Um, so very often people will get into um, one particular energetic orientation or another. So sometimes people will be very, very energy forward when they're really wanting to be in relationship. They're, and you know you've experienced that before, and it's kind of this um, just really uh, like in your face kind of energy, um, and with no sort of space for you to come in and connect with them. You know they're just kind of like pushing all of their energy at you. And then there's other people who tend to be more energy back, which is um, can be a very kind of closed off, like you know very shy, very kind of. Like, you know, don't come connect with me. I'm just going to be over here behind my walls. Um, and then other people are very like energy vertical where they're they're just kind of very rigid and there's no kind of dynamic to, to their energy. They're, um, they tend to be kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of a, the right word to use, but just, I think rigid is probably the best word. There's just not a whole lot of movement in their energy. So a big part of what, horses can teach us is how to move through all of those different energetic spaces in in a dance with the with another person's energy so that you're so it becomes this playful beautiful 
dance instead of this kind of like crashing into each other or never really connecting or like one person is trying to connect and the other person sort of like running away. <laughs> um, so it's this really um, powerful tool and powerful framework for how to approach relationships in a really healthy, um, mutually aware sort of way. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, when, when I was looking at your, you know, your video and watching your your intro and you talked about the energy dance i i just really connected with that because i am a tango dancer and i met my current husband dancing tango but it was tragedy in my life you know when i lost my husband to suicide that's when i started to tango dance and it was such a metaphor for for getting my life back getting back into life, but it was, it was the dance. It was, it was the connection. It was an energy that, that I connected with so many things. It, you connect with, with the person, you connect with the music and you're really connecting with the, I like to say the earth, yeah. but it's ground. Okay. Because you have to move and glide your feet along the ground. So you, you have this connection and, and I love the way you call this the energy dance because it's really what keeps you alive and healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and I think like the way you have put them into the three or they're the four categories, but the energy forward and the energy back energy vertical. And, and you say that you move, you're always moving in and out of them and doing the dance. And so that's what you, help people learn how to move in and out of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to be able to be so kind of um, present and aware in the moment that um, that there's, um, there's really no question about what's right for you, you know, what's right for you and what's right for the person that you're interacting with, you know? So, um, so uh, you know, a lot of, um, dating relationship um, experts out there have kind of very like this is what you have to do you know this is this is how you do online dating or this is how you uh, be in a marriage you know like these are the things that you have to do and um, and I think that that's really limiting <laughs> and um, I think that there's a way that you can really have fun and play in the in the energy of getting to know people, even people that you've known for a million years. Um, and so if you if you can really start to feel into your physical, your, you know, I think of our physical bodies as these powerful, wise um, sort of interpreters of, of information. And, um, and we tend to ignore signals from our bodies, you know, messages from our bodies. And, Horses are really good at teaching um, how to be in the moment and and how to be really tuned into those messages from our bodies. So you know how um, you've probably had the experience of um, meeting someone and just all of a sudden you feel like ugh, just this kind of like icky feeling in your body and your gut usually. <laughs> um, and a lot of times, you know, we're trained to be polite. And to just sort of like grin and bear it, you know, like this person is making me feel literally sick to my stomach, but I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna deal with it and I'm gonna be fine, I'm gonna, you know, be polite and I'm gonna finish this conversation or I'm gonna stay, you know, sitting in the seat on the subway next to them or whatever thing it is, instead of listening to that guidance, that wisdom. And um, so it's about keeping ourselves safe and it's about keeping ourselves tuned in. Um, and it's also about being able to enjoy and have fun. So when you meet someone and you feel really like sort of the opposite feeling, like a lightness or like a, you know, a magnetic kind of attraction to them, are you listening to that? Are you tuning into that? Or are you trying to ignore that too and just be like, cool, you know, or trying to like keep it, you know, whatever. So, um, so I really like the the way of being that I learned from horses, and um, and the one of the great things about 
um, horse wisdom is that you don't even necessarily have to go into a session with a horse in order to get that wisdom. And that's why I wrote this book in the way that I did. Um, it's so that it could be almost like an experiential learning process for you. So there's, um, you know, there's these 10, um, what I call relationship secrets that I learned from Jove. And, um, and each one at the end has, um, it's called a horse wisdom in action. And so it's kind of journal prompts or like activities that you can actually do and experience in your life, in your relationship life, in your dating life, um, so that you're able to tune in more and more to your own inner guidance. Oh, that's, that's great. So a person doesn't have to go to the stables. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they can just get your book. But when you, when you have a, a client that works with you, I don't know if you're doing it now, but in the past, you would actually take that client into the stable, right, with Joe. Yes. And that's that would be like the session. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of explain, can you just give a little example of what this would be like for someone? And before I go on, do you still do that kind of work with clients? If so I'll answer, yeah, I'll answer your second question first. Right now, no, I'm not doing that that specific work. So the work that I'm doing with clients now is it's pretty much all over the phone, um, and it's it's still using the horse wisdom. Very often, I'll use, I have a um, a deck of horse wisdom cards um, called the Way of the Horse, and so sometimes I'll use the they're kind of like oracle cards, sort of um, in a, in a very horse wisdom sort of way. So it's like very non-linear, very, you know, it's, it's not like yes or no answers to things or what you should or shouldn't do. It's kind of a way to bring you back to yourself. So, um, so instead of going to the barn or people having to travel here and go to the barn, we use these cards or we, you know, there's a whole series of different, um, kind of transformational coaching techniques that I do with people now in that way. Um, but what I used to do with Jove, um, and what I probably will ultimately do again at some point in the future, I just haven't gotten back to that yet with the horses um, and that one-on-one -on -one work. Um, but basically the way it would look is um, we would have a series of different interactions that I would lead the, the client and Jove through um, in a round pen or some sort of like relatively small enclosed space so that there was enough room for both Jove and the client to be able to move around freely and to kind of get away from each other or get closer together or, you know, dance with each other. Um, but not so far apart that it was, you know, that they would lose that connection um, in the moment. And so it was basically, you know, just kind of like step by step going through these different activities um, to, to teach the client how to, listen to their their internal guidance and how to be simultaneously aware of what the horse's boundaries and desires were and what theirs were and you know ultimately the sort of capstone experience of that was a reflective session which is where i would help the client to create a question that they wanted to go in and ask jove and then uh, that could go, you know, like infinite different directions because the question, you know, formulating the question is such a powerful part of the process. And I think that we don't give that a whole lot of credit, but it's, it's something that more and more I'm aware that if we can frame our question in what I call a high quality way, then the answers can come almost instantly for any issue that we're facing. Um, so. so yeah. So, so what, can you give us an example of a, a type of question that someone would ask? Yeah. And do they do they um, actually speak it out loud? And do they look at Joe when they ask this question? Yeah. Yeah. So what would happen is we would be outside of, of the enclosure and I would have, you know, a notebook. And so I would say, OK, you know, what is it that you're wanting to know? What do you want to ask Joe today? And very often people would start by, you know, with like, um, you know, I really want to meet my soulmate and I don't know why I can't. And, you know, here's all of my past experience and here's what I wor worry about for the future. And they would kind of start to spin out into their stories, you know, their, their past future story. Um, and so I would sort of 
encourage them to come back into this, like right now in this moment, what are you most wanting to know? And, um, and, and very often the best framing for a question going in, in that way so that people could get the most um, answer. Cause uh, again, like I said, the horses don't, they're not, they're not linear thinking creatures and they don't have shoulds or shouldn'ts, <laughs> you know, they, it's just, it's about like, what's going to feel best, what's most authentic, genuine alignment, uh, based experience that you could have. So, um, so I found that the best questions, sometimes people would just go, I don't know, whatever he wants to tell me. And so then I would say, okay, so just go in and ask Jove what he wants to share with you today. And so then they would go into the the round pen or the you know the arena or the the small pasture wherever we were working, and ask that question. Sometimes they would ask it out loud, and sometimes they would just sort of ask it you know from their heart. Um, because you know, obviously, Jove didn't speak English, so it didn't have to be <laughs> out loud. Some people just you know they preferred to to say it out out loud in that way. Um, and then the way that he would communicate the answer to that question was, you know, with his physical movements. And sometimes it was, you know, people would have like a thought that would come to mind. Some people heard like music, um, you know, or a particular song that reminded them of something. Um, there were people who even felt like they were kind of taken on like a, a almost like a soul journey with him where he was kind of like showing them things that um, were important for them in their life and or were important for them to know so that they could have whatever thing it was that they were wanting. Um, but the, the really cool thing about it is that, so if I was doing um, a one-on-one -on -one session with someone, or like, I guess, technically a two-on-one, <laughs> because it was me and Joe sort of working in tandem with that person, um, then my perspective, my perception, of what Jove was sharing with them was almost always different than what they received because that's what everything, is. it's all about perception and perspective, you know? So, um, so I might've seen him go over and kind of like nuzzle the person's hand and think, oh, he's really wanting for her to touch him or he's really wanting to connect, you know, physically. And, then later when I would do a debrief with that client, she might say, um, well, you know, he came over and he was trying to push me away. He kept pushing his nose against my hand, you know. So we're two people seeing the same thing, but having two very different perspectives about what was actually happening. Does that make sense? Is that? Well, yeah, yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense. And it, it reminds me that, you know, our perceptions can oftentimes deceive us. So we, we need to really go to our feelings and say, okay, what am I feeling, number one? And then we need to go to really what is the truth? Because we have too many things that, you know, are false perceptions in our yeah. life. And yeah. that's, that's a perfect um, example mm -hmm. with, with, the, with what you see, what she's seeing. But Job is the one that's, he's, he's the truth <laughs> because he's the one doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's all part of the, the growing, the evolving, and the yeah. learning. Yes. Absolutely. Really, what it comes down to is, you know, is she going to get her answer? That's yeah. what she's there for. She wants to find that answer and her own personal truth, right? And, yeah. and, and Jove is the, is the, the tool. You, your, your, your coaching and using Jove is the avenue yes. to help her find that, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I think is so fascinating about all of this, um, this type of work where it's, it's all ultimately, I think, in my, you know, my perspective, my belief is that it's all basically the same thing. It's all teaching the same thing. And, you know, the, the more I've studied world religions, world philosophies, which I've always just been completely fascinated by, they all have, um, sort of a similar through line, <laughs> you know, it's, it feels to me like it's all about coming back to that, you know, that truth, whatever that truth is in the moment, <laughs> you know? And um, so my truth 
is not necessarily anybody else's truth. It's all kind of a creation of my mind, my ego. Um, and so the more I think that the more that we can um, question those things in a in a um, an open hearted, curious, loving, you know, self loving um, space. Um, you know, what is it that I'm believing about this? How does that, is that making me feel great or is that making me feel crappy? And if it's making you feel crappy, then you can shift that belief. And so, you know, a lot of times people would ask those kinds of questions like, you know, I had this horrible experience with an ex. How am I supposed to feel good about that? And, you know, so, so sometimes we would go in and they would ask a question like that. You know, how can I feel better about this? How can I, what do I need to know so that I can trust people again? Or you know, how will it feel in my body when I'm falling in love, like in a really genuine, healthy way? And um, so those are all things that he, you know, Jove was able to show people and really give them a visceral sense of what that is. But we don't need to go to anybody else to be able to tune into that. You know, what's true for you and what what love feels like for you is, I mean, you can't really describe it or define it for somebody else you only can for yourself you know so bringing us back to ourselves is like i think it's the greatest gift that you can yeah. give yeah absolutely i'm in total agreement with yeah. you and and teach the, the the same thing i love what you said and and i believe that all transformational coaches teachers believe that it does come from within mm -hmm. it's some someone else cannot do it for you they can help us along on our journey but ultimately the work comes from within and that's when the transformation occurs mm -hmm. but i didn't want to go back to it made me think about people that you know horses can be very intimidating they're big large creatures and and i think that people sometimes would go in with a, a little bit of a sense of fear right oh yeah but then, but then this is a perfect example of how fear is overcome, right? Yes. It's how it's overcome and also um, to teach people how to be able to discern what is um, a fear that is there to keep me safe and what is a fear that is, you know, unnecessary and is just holding me back, mm. you know? So a lot of times... Um, when when people would go in with a fear of horses, what what their fears, you know, that that was outside of the the barn setting, what they they were experiencing a lot of fear, you know, like fear of men or fear of the government or fear of getting sick or, you know, like fear of their own bodies, fear, you know, all of those fears would show up in these different ways. And, um, and so very often, you know, in the context of relationships, if you are afraid of, of connecting with another person, if you're afraid of somebody else seeing you, if you're afraid of being hurt by someone, um, then that's, that's not going to be a place where you can create a healthy connection you know, because you're either going to be pushing people away or you're going to be almost inviting in boundary crossing because you're, you know, if you don't set clear boundaries, if people don't know what's okay for you and what's not, then they're going to cross your boundaries until you set them really clearly. And so very often if somebody went in with fear, um, Jove's reaction would be one of two things. He would either cross their boundaries come be like right in their space, really energy forward, you know, like picking at them, kind of, you know, making them feel uncomfortable until they finally were like, that's too much, you know, and would like create that boundary. And then he would respect it, you know? Um, and, and there's a way of setting a boundary that lets the other person feel safe too. You know, that would, uh, Joe felt more comfortable when that person was setting a boundary than when he was having to figure out, like, are you going to set this bound? Like, where, what do you, you know, <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, so people were able to find out for themselves what they're comfortable with and to have the feeling of, like, I set that boundary. And when I set that boundary, he didn't run away. He sure. stayed, he just kind of stayed there. And we, we could have like this really nice, 
lovely interaction side by side instead of me kind of feeling like, oh no, don't, you know, oh stop, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to set this boundary or or being really aggressively setting a boundary, which some other people did. That was less common with women to like aggressively set a boundary. Um, but there were some who would do that and would be kind of like, get away from me, you know, and Joe would be like, yeah, all right, <laughs> you know, see ya. <laughs> and then he would kind of find something else to do over here. So. Um, so it's just a, a way to practice that. I called it um, like a sandbox. It was like a, you know, a playground. It's like you mm -hmm. can practice what, you know, bringing your energy up to set a boundary in a healthy way, in a loving way. You know, it's a, that's a loving act to be able to set a boundary, to keep yourself safe and to keep them safe. And um, so there's just so many different aspects of of the experience that they would have with the horses that they could then bring out into the world and actually be able to enjoy themselves because they had that that experience of being able to in a healthy loving way set a safe clear boundary sure well i like when you talked about the fear so the person walks in with the fear and then joe he actually his role is to help them realize that their fear is really not real mm -hmm. and it's not right mm -hmm. yeah let me think of i love the the acronym for fear you might have heard it. It's false evidence <laughs> appearing of, real. You know. So, so really, their fears, in a sense, he 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 calmed their fears. Yeah. 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 Right. So, it, and then they had to come to the realization that the fear they were having, like he was going to stomp on them or whatever, wasn't real. Right. Yep. Yeah. So he helped them see that, which I, yeah. I think it's beautiful because yeah. I think that. And you can speak to this in relationships. So many times we we're in them or we're not in them because of fears, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're sticking in relationships because of fears because we're afraid that you know we're not going to survive or we're not going to this or we're not going to that or and then we're not getting into relationships because of fear. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so interesting because so many people I, I could. I know myself, I would see a horse, it's kind of a little intimidating right away, but I would, I mean, I'm just guessing that I, I, was, I think they're beautiful, beautiful creatures. So I'd get up there and I'd probably look and I'd probably do the energetic dance and I would, you know, I'd want to do the tango. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there were people who really surprised themselves with what they were willing to do once they got there. You know, I, I would never um, force people to go in. So, you know, if somebody was just feeling like, I'm really afraid of him, like he was big, he was a big, powerful horse. And um, so there were times that people were like, I, I don't know if I feel safe. And I would say, okay, well, that's, you know, you can stay out here on the other side of the fence and you'll still be able to have just as powerful of an experience. And almost always, <laughs> When people were given that permission, they were like, oh, no, 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 I know I want to go in. You know, they um, they didn't want to let their fears be like ruling their lives. You know, they wanted to have those experiences. And I think sometimes um, when you have those kinds of limiting beliefs and those kinds of fears that are, um, you know, based on past thinking or future worries or whatever it is, um, you, you know, that shows up in a lot of areas in your life. You know, you're holding yourself back in one thing, you're probably holding yourself back in other areas too. And so it was kind of um, sort of a gift to be able to have that experience in a really safe way of saying like, I want to do this for me. You know, this is, this is an important experience for me to have and I want to face this fear and then to face it and to come out of it really transformed really like a, in you know being able to experience things in a whole new way um it was just it, it was just always so beautiful and so inspiring to watch sure sure so so if 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 we someone bought your book and they were looking through it would they be able to determine just by doing the exercises and so forth if they're they're a dominant like energy forward are, are people usually a dominant one way forward back vertical or when they're healthy it sounds like to me the way you have put it out there you're doing the the dance when mm -hmm. you're understanding and aware of your energies right yes if yes. you're really aware you could perhaps be sabotaging 
relationships because you're you're over overpowering in one area. Is that correct to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know the um, we learn those patterns, the that energetic orientation uh, because of our past experiences. You know, this is this is what has worked for you. So I I always say to people, you know, I, I've talked to so many clients over the years who have been like, well, I think that I'm really energy forward damn it, <laughs> you know, like, um, or I think I've been really energy back, or I think I've been really energy vertical, and I haven't been letting people in. And they start to kind of beat up on themselves about it. And what I always say is, this worked for you. You know, here you are, having had this experience, <laughs> and, um, and you're here now, you know, like, th this is what you needed to be, this is how you needed to be in the world up until now. And so um, so I want people to to love and appreciate the way that they've been interacting and to recognize that you can choose something different going forward. And here's a place where you can explore those different ways of being. And so yes, in the book that you know, I talk about the different energetic orientations, and I talk about ways that you can sort of practice coming out of them. So if your typical orientation is very energy forward, um, and you notice that people tend to, um, like when you're talking to people, they might kind of be like, Ooh, you know, <laughs> um, or, or it seems like people just aren't really wanting to connect with you or whatever thing it is. Um, so if, if your belief is I'm really energy forward, then you can explore what would it be like if I rocked my energy back and played with being in kind of a more, um, quiet, um, still open and receptive um, energetic space, but just not with, um, not staying constantly like this. And we need all of the different types of energy orientations. You know, we can't, if we all just, if everybody was just like energy back all the time, like in this kind of relaxed posture, there would be no nowhere to go. You know, we need to bring our energy up in order to set boundaries. We need to bring our energy up in order to connect, to create that initial connection. There has to be a, you know, coming forward. Hey, hi, <laughs> you know, good to meet you. And then you can rock your energy back and be like, you know, what's up? Tell me about you. And then, you know, so, so that's how you can kind of practice. If you tend to be very energy forward, you still want to be able to be in that space, but also you want to be able to, you know, maybe a little bit more than usual practice rocking back and receiving and being quiet and listening, you know. Um, and if you tend to be very energy vertical, you might want to play with sometimes being energy forward and sometimes being energy back. And so all of these are kind of ways of, of just sort of breaking that pattern of, you know, the way that you're holding your body, the way that you're interacting with people when you're feeling safe and secure how are where's your energy when you're feeling anxious where's your energy so you're just kind of always questioning you're doing that kind of inquiry like where am i right now in this moment how am i feeling and where's my energy where's my body you know mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it, well, it sounds like it's you know it goes back to really being aware you know because nothing really happens or or changes in our lives and until we're aware. Yes. We have to have the awareness first. Mm -hmm. and then we can make the choice to do something about it. And right. I love what you said about, you know, people that have done things in the past and then they realize that some light bulb goes on and now they're beating themselves up. Well, we don't want that. No. We don't want to be beating ourselves up at all. No. And, and I love what you said early on in the interview when you were talking about Joe, Mm -hmm. You described him and you said he has no shoulds or shouldn'ts. And that really stuck me, stuck with me when, when I heard you say that because I thought, wow, if we as humans wouldn't always be doing that to ourselves, like, oh, I should have done this or I shouldn't have, I think that would be so freeing in itself, right? Yes, totally. I I um I don't know where I first heard this or somewhere along the way, somebody said, um, stop shooting all over yourself, you know? And I was just like, oh, that's totally what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it's so easy to get into that habit. And 
um, it can be just as easy to get out of it. Um, you know, when there's that, again, I, I, I always kind of go back to that curiosity, that open heartedness, you know, how, can you look at yourself lovingly and with that compassionate curiosity, you know, what, um, what, it, what is the, the, what is the gift in this for me? You know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I like, okay, so all of the, the, the energies, you know, they're, they're very descriptive. We've got the back, we've got the forward, and then we've got the vertical. But to me, if I'm just thinking of vertical, I would think, wow, vertical, it just seems like right here, <laughs> straight. And it would be where someone would want to be. But in, in the way you describe it, it's really not. It's not the perfect place. Well, it is sometimes. In some situations, it absolutely is. And you know, a lot of my clients are um, really successful, really powerful professional women who have to be in that energy vertical orientation in their work, in their jobs. You know, that's it's it's confident, it's you know, proud, it's um, solid, it's grounded. It you know, it, there's there's power. In that position, you know, you've heard of maybe the that idea of like power pose, where you can, you know, like put yourself, your body in a certain position, and it evokes a certain feeling. And so, being energy vertical is great. The problem is only really arises when that's all you are is energy vertical all the time. You know that you never allow yourself to go out of your cylinder at all, that you never allow yourself to reach out and connect to someone, that you never allow yourself to rock back and receive from anyone, that you're, you know, like you're just, you know, this is, it's me. And, you know, if you're not going to be here in this same sort of energy with me, then, you know, that kind of thing. So like with anything else, it's, you know, it's not about, um, one way of of orienting energetically is wrong it just it could be so much better it could be so much more enjoyable and so much more dynamic and bring you so much more of the connection and the um the fun that i think most of us are looking for you know sure absolutely actually i just got a visual because like i said i think vertical because i'm thinking of a dancer you want to be straight and you want to be so poised and so forth. But what came to my mind is if you're vertical <laughs> all the time, you could never go this way and rest. <laughs> you need to rest, right? Yeah. We need to rest. That's what kind of came to my mind. You can never rest if yeah. you stay in that state all the time. Like you said, you need it. Powerful people, you need the confidence, you need this, you need them all. We need the, we need the balance, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's what you do. Well, like what you say, you're teaching that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. So there's that idea of um, hypervigilance that I think many, many of us get into. I, that's um, that has been a pattern of mine in the past that, you know, I was kind of constantly like, OK, what's happening around me? What, you know, like feeling like I needed to, um, <laughs> you know, always know where like where everybody else was coming from so that I could feel safe. And what I discovered is that I was. Um, not feeling safe ever because I was always looking for, you know, the thing that could hurt me. And, um, you know, one of the things about, so I, like you, um, was a dancer. I grew up dancing. I didn't do um, partner, like couple dancing, like tango or that kind of thing. I did ballet and modern and jazz and tap and flamenco and folklorica, you know, like all these different kinds of dance. Um, and so that, it feels really natural to me to um, to be able to move through all of those different planes of space in in a context of dancing or in a context of riding horses, you know. But when it came to just interactions with people, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't letting myself flow through those different spaces, you know, um, and. In my efforts to correct that, I would often way overcorrect one direction or the other, you know, like, oh, I'm really energy vertical. And then I remember having a lot of experiences with being super energy forward all the time as a way of kind of getting out of that. And that was good. It was that was an important part of my process to be willing to 
put myself out there and be like, hi, you know, good to meet you. I'm Jana, what, you know, what's your deal? And then I could learn how to rock my energy back after that. And then I could learn, you know, I, it's, it's a practice. It's an ongoing practice, just like with anything else, yoga, dance, horseback riding, reading, <laughs> writing, it's all a practice, you know, it's all an ongoing thing. So that if you can think of it as um, it, like an exploration, experiential learning. It's not, it's not about like getting that certificate at the end. Check, <laughs> you know, I have my diploma in the energetic dance and now I'm done. That's not how that works, yeah. you know? Well, that, that makes so much sense because when you think about it, you're encountering so many different people throughout your life. Yeah. And, and that's the whole point. And, and every, even, if it's a, even if it's your partner that you're with, they're constantly changing. We're constantly changing, right? We yeah. never stay the same. Hopefully. <laughs> you, have to, you have to learn to dance with them to keep the relationship good. And so I think this this work you're doing is amazing. It, it, it really, it could help so many people. It's, it's about awareness, about where you are and how you respond and your energy. And I think that once you, people learn that, it, it it can make relationships so much more enriching. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's, there's something that's really powerful about being, um, being willing to evolve in your relationships, allowing for the people that you're with to grow and evolve. So, it, you know, I was thinking about, um, uh, I've known my husband for, uh 24 25 years now um and you know we we got married in 2008 where you know we um we have this long you know involved sometimes very dramatic sometimes just really magical um relationship and so if i was to um see him as always being that 14 year old kid that I first met all those years ago, that would be really problematic for him and for me. You know, he, he has changed so much over the years, but it's really easy to get into a habit of, well, this is how you used to feel about it. You told me that you felt that way. And now you're telling me you don't feel this way anymore about it. Like, ugh, you know, and to get frustrated by that or to get frightened by that. Like, what's that going to mean for our relationship if you're changing, if you're growing, you know, or if I'm feeling like I want to change and grow and I'm feeling like he's not allowing me to, he's wanting me to stay that person that I was, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, last month, last night, <laughs> as opposed to where are you right now? Like, what are your feelings about this right now? How are you feeling? What are you, we, what are you needing? How's our relationship for you? How are you experiencing it? What do you, you know, is there something that, that you're needing more of or less of? Is there something that's shifted for you? And so we try to, he and I have this kind of ongoing dialogue about that. And sometimes that's really hard, you know, like. Sure. Well, and that's why people end up coming to coaches. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's it's very mature and it's 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 what's what i believe is needed in a relationship long lasting evolving relationships need that communication and dialogue and and i think that people watching that are going to watch this you know they need to get your book because <laughs> i think as couples i think as especially as new newly dating newly dating couples that you're just beginning to learn about one another, I think that your book would be so so fabulous in helping them understand their energies. <laughs> yeah, and there's something about that that just starting out the the kind of blossoming of that love relationship that is so complicated, <laughs> and it's it can be really overwhelming. It can just take over your whole world. And you know, I talk to so many women who are like. I can't focus on anything else besides what's going on with him and wondering what he's thinking and feeling. And it's just, you know, it, it can be um, impossible to focus anywhere else. And that's not healthy either. So, you know, there's, there's a way of experiencing all the different phases of a relationship in a way that feels really good, that feels really nurturing, that feels really, you know, loving of yourself and of the other person. And, um, 
and that's that I think that that's just endlessly fascinating. I love working with women who are um, willing to really be in that journey and to, you know, um, be in that space of openness and curiosity. Like I, I may not have ever been able to experience online dating in a way that felt good, but could I now, could I let myself have that experience that, you know, where it feels good to, um, to meet someone and to go through that process of getting to know them, of discerning whether, you know, this person is going to feel good to me or not, you know, um, how to date in a way that feels good. Um, it's just all, you know, it's, it, it's all, uh, like I said, it's endlessly fascinating to me. So. And, and that person is going to have a, you know, um, have an advantage yeah. going into a relationship already understanding a little bit about her own energy, you know, is it back forward, vertical, is she doing the dance? That's, yeah. you know, that she's going to have an advantage and her, on her journey in her relationship. So, yeah. so Jenna, um, you have a bunch of videos. We call it on Transformation TV, we call it our boot camps. So all of uh, all of the teachers have written our best selling book and we have all these videos that we have for purchase. So they can go to Transformation TV, they can get your book and they can get your videos and your videos it, it, it's, it'll be the training on how to understand these energies, right? Yeah, how to understand the energy, like where the the first video, which is free on on the the site, is is all about figuring out what your dominant energetic orientation has been so far, and then the boot camp is sort of all about it's it's really kind of diving deep into how you can work with the different energies, how you can start to get into that energetic dance in the, specifically in the context of dating. And I talk a lot about, you know, online dating and how to make that more fun, just in general dating. And once you're in a relationship with someone, you, I think you should still be dating, you know, shoulds, right? But it's, it's you know, there, there still needs to be that, that, um, getting to know each other, making time for each other, making space for each other in an ongoing sort of way. So it's about um, in throughout the phases of a relationship, how can you be in that healthy, fun, energetic dance? Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing is that the more you are willing to explore that and to figure out what that means for you, the more you're going to attract that energy in others. Sure. In partners, yeah. potential partners, <laughs> in friends, in coworkers, and you know, because it's all in my mind, that's all relationship. Yes, yes. And that's the the laws of attraction. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So I think this has been I think this has been great. Yeah. And we don't have any questions right now, but people will watch the replay and Jaina will respond to your questions. And you can learn, I, I mean, again, I can't tell you, I find this fascinating work that she is doing. Mm -hmm. You can get her book and you can go to www.transformation.tv, the website, and you'll find all the transformational teachers there. And Jaina is one of them. So get her work and please come back and explore. Explore Transformation TV, stay on Facebook Live. You're gonna hear more authors. and. Just stay connected, stay connected. If you like Jana's work, stay connected with her. So is there anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye? No, just thank you so much again for inviting me to, to have this wonderful conversation with you. And it, it's been just a delight to get to know you a little bit better and to share the stuff that I'm so passionate about. And I'm totally open to answering questions um, from people in the comments, or if you want to reach out to me, um, you know, in a more private way, you can send me a, a message um, through my my Facebook page. So, yeah. thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, yeah. Jane. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm wishing you all a very very happy holiday season and a wonderful new year. I'll be back the first. Um, Friday in January, I suppose, and I'll be putting it out. You'll know about it. So again, thank you and have a very prosperous new year. Bye for now.